you know, speaking of the pandemic, here it is. You were able to close a very complex deal between El Dorado and Caesars amid a pandemic. Now you're trying to close another one while we're still experiencing a global outbreak, but you don't expect your bid for William Hill to close until second half of next year. Are there risks in that lag time? Well, there's always risk, Contessa, in a, an M&A transaction. In this case, what we need is shareholder approval on the William Hill side and normal course regulatory approvals on our side, given what we've just went through running the gauntlet with Caesars, this should be a much more straightforward transaction, thankfully. All right, and the board of William Hill is unanimously recommending it, but Jeffrey's UK analyst puts the value of those William Hill shares at more than 20% higher than your offer. Is there any concern on your part about the shareholders accepting it? And if they do accept it, what's your plan for the UK part of the business? So we've spent a great deal of time with the William Hill board negotiating a transaction that works for both companies. And as you've seen, uh, they unanimously recommend the deal as structured. In terms of what we would do with the non-U.S. assets, we said in our disclosure on uh, yesterday that we intend to sell the non-U.S. assets that they don't fit our core uh, structure, despite being a great brand and a great business overseas, we are a domestic focus company here. And you've said that repeatedly, that your intentions really are on the U.S. side of the business. Um, and, and you said that, you know, the total addressable market in the future could be $35 billion. I know that the single digital wallet for sports gambling, for online sports gambling, for iGaming, which is casino games online and online poker is really important to you. But look, that's important to DraftKings, which is spending a ton of money. It's important to Penn and Barstool. It's important to MGM in its efforts on this front. How would this deal position you competitively and strategically? Yeah, so to be clear on the, the 30 billion number that you cited, we've been, uh, what we've said is the last two brokerage reports that have come out, which I believe were Macquarie and Goldman had total addressable market in, in excess of 30 billion. We don't think it needs to be nearly that big for this transaction to be a home run for our shareholders. What this allows us to do is work toward a single wallet solution where we tie online sports betting, online casino, and online poker to a single wallet and to our Caesars rewards database and also to our, our our partnerships with ESPN and CBS. So it should allow us to accumulate market share in a cost-effective fashion in terms of customer acquisition and then the broad array of options to earn and use points both online and offline, we think will make our customers stickier than some of our peers. But to be clear, we think this is an enormous opportunity, as I've said, uh, before to you, Contessa, as I think this is the largest opportunity in this space in three decades from a growth perspective. We think there'll be multiple winners in the space, and we think we're well positioned to be one of them. I want to ask you about a short-term question here. COVID has already disrupted the NFL season. We just learned that two more Titans team members have, uh, have tested positive. The NFL now says that game between the Steelers and the Titans will be delayed till sometime later in the season. Are you concerned about the implications of coronavirus for this season and how important is football in this year's sports betting trajectory? Well, of course, we're concerned with coronavirus generally, um, you know, throughout our, throughout our business, sports included. What we're talking about here in terms of the opportunity and the deal that's on the table today is much more about the next five and 10 years than about the current season or certainly, you know, this week's games. Um, you know, we've seen the sports leagues deal with uh, health related issues since they've come back. Uh, all of them have uh, seemed to prosecute it in a, uh, in a responsible manner. And we expect that that will continue to be the case.
Tom, it's David Faber. Uh, you are moving pretty aggressively just in general in terms of expanding your footprint. I just wonder, I mean, the Caesars deal in and of itself was a large deal for El Dorado. Now you're embarking on this. Can you give assurance to investors that you're on top of the integration, particularly in a COVID environment where I would assume people are not quite as able to get together as you might otherwise want them to? Absolutely, David. Um, and as an aside, I've been listening to talk to you you talking about M&A for years. It's a little bit thrilled to actually be talking about one of our deals with you. But we kept, uh, thankfully, we kept three senior executives within Caesars, Chris Holdren, Eric Hessian, Christian Stewart, that were instrumental in building the sports business, building the partnerships. And there are, Eric and Chris are our co-presidents of the Caesar sports business. And they're leading this charge for us uh, so that we can keep our eye on the ball on the core operating business. And you've seen what we've been able to do to date in the sports and online world, both from an operating perspective and from these partnerships and now this deal. And our core operations have been uh, improving. And we, we posted the pre-release third quarter numbers um, in our release on Monday, which were, uh, which were strong. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.